first online event um, of the 2020, 2022, 23 school year. Over the last four years, hosting this symposium in person in 2019 and online throughout the pandemic, we've had an amazing amount of support and participation from the wider Oakland Early Childhood uh, Education community. And so we're very thankful uh, for you sticking with us and we hope that you've gotten as much out of the symposium events as we have. Throughout the pandemic, We've had uh, we've we've tried to find ways to support the ECE community in Oakland. Uh, one effort is called the Let's Talk Early Learning. Uh, Let's Talk sessions are held in the evenings on Zoom, and are informal uh, ways for you to get to know each other and uh, informal ways to get to know other early learning professionals and talk about subjects that are the top of the field, right, at, at, at the moment and, um, and ongoing. We have four wonderful facilitators for the Let's Talk Early Learning, Annette Wright, Yvonne or Yvonne Garcia, Nini Humphrey, and Jaquetta Wallace, who have made these events fun and informative. So Yvonne or Yvonne, hosts in Spanish, which is new this year. And the next Let's Talk um, is Monday, November 14th at 6 p.m. So give it a try. Today, our topic is partnering with families of children with special needs. The early learning field has many, has made great strides over the several, over se I apologize, over the several years uh, to better assess children at a younger age. We know getting help early um, gives children with special needs and uh, children with disabilities a better chance at success um, in life uh, as well as in school. We also know children have a better chance of reaching their full potential when families and early learning educators partner together effectively. In the Oakland Head Start program, we have a component that um, concentrates on um, supporting families um, and children who um, have um, or have special needs, and it is called our mental health and disabilities um, component. And we have a program specialist who works uh, directly with us uh, in the Head Start program to support families, children, and teachers. And her name is Winona Elms. She's our disabilities and mental health coordinator, and she's one of the facilitators this evening. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. And uh, to, to find out more about how to connect families to services and also tips on the best ways to work with families and children with special needs. Now for some background and some meeting housekeeping, we're gonna turn to Susan Jiang from Alameda County Office of Education, who's co-facilitating with me today. Susan. Great, thank you so much, Tracy. Welcome everyone, nice to see you all. Um, it's great to, uh, be here with you. And um, I just want to take a moment to thank Tandem Partners in Early Learning for making the giveaway uh, possible this Saturday. And also want to thank Bananas for hosting. Uh, it was great to see everyone on, on Saturday, despite the rain. Um, as Tracy shared, I am Susan Jong. I work with the County Office of Education and I help lead our Inclusive Early Education Expansion Program, which is a countywide program and is sponsored by the Department of Education in collaboration collaboration with the Special Education Division of the state. Um, so now to housekeeping. We have a specific time for questions um, for the speakers. And if you have a question during Q&A, if you could please raise your hand um, using the raise hand feature by clicking on the reactions button and clicking on raise hand option below the emojis. You can also ask questions in the chat. We will be doing our best to answer all the questions, but maybe may not also need to follow up. This meeting is being recorded and will be shared widely, so please keep in mind as you participate. As we go through our presentations, you do not need your video on, but please turn them on during breakout. The breakout sessions will not be recorded. 
we do we know many of you are joining us today um, and interested I saw it in the chats you're interested in receiving the professional development credits and certificates they will be mailed out to you after today's event um, and we'll be you'll be seeing them in your email boxes before we get started, um, I wanted to continue my gratitude by thanking the Rainin Foundation, Tandem Partners for Early Learning, and the Packard Foundation for supporting this symposium. There are many organizations throughout Oakland that participated in making this event possible, um, and their names are listed on the slide. And now, before we begin, I wanted to be sure to take a moment to uh, moment, sorry, make, take, be sure to take a moment for us to all honor our native lands on which we live. We made, it a, we made it a tradition to always honor our indigenous neighbors at the start of our symposium events. Please take a moment to locate the native land you are on right now by going to the link we will put in the chat. And please take a moment and add the lands you are on right now to the chat. Another way to find out more about the Sagarete Land Trust, which is a native woman-run organization and provides a lot of resources from how to pay the Shumi land tax to educational opportunities. Please take a moment to check it out. I also want to thanks I want to thank you so much for participating in this land acknowledgement, and I'm going to introduce our first speaker for tonight. Teresa Lozak is the principal at Oakland Unified School District's Burbank Preschool and Diagnostic Center. Teresa is going to give us information about how to have Oakland preschool children assessed and also give us an update about what is happening at OUSD related to children with special needs. Teresa. Uh, thanks so much, Susan. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? So I wanted to talk to everybody. Um, I know there's a lot of different people on this call today, and I know that many people are interested in supporting families who might have concerns about their child's, their preschoolers' development. And so I wanted to start there today. Um, so let's say you have a three, four, or five-year-old, and you're concerned about their development. Maybe their parent is concerned, or you as their teacher is concerned. What are some things you can do? And we're going to start from that perspective. So the first thing I always have families do is speak to a trusted professional. So if you're a parent, you could speak to your doctor, your child's teacher, or another person in your life that you feel really understands your child and their growth um, and their development and see what they think. Often, I think it's really valuable. And I think during the pandemic, often our, our families, um, we didn't talk to other families as much and we didn't talk to other teachers as much. And so we didn't get that feedback from other people about, is this normal? Is this what's happening? You know, my child is doing this. Did your child do this at age three? And so we didn't get those perspectives from one another. And I, so I think this is really valuable to check in with other people about our questions around development and say, hey, I, I have some questions about my child's development or I have questions about my student's development. And I think that's a great uh, place to start if you're concerned, just checking in with someone you trust. And so that's a great place to start. Um, another thing to do is you can talk about, um, you can uh, look up developmental milestones. And so even though we are seeing many children that are behind um, in their development due to lack of exposure or lack of opportunities um, due to the pandemic, we still have a really good reference point of what a three-year-old should be doing. Um, in their gross motor development, in their fine motor development, in their language skills. Um, and we have um, years and years and years of research about what children should be doing at different ages. And so I put a link in here from um, the CDC, which is a great resource for those developmental milestones, but it's something actually you can look up on Google pretty easily. Um, looking up those developmental milestones and saying, hey, is my student doing these things as expected for their age? And that's a great place to look at if you're concerned about a student or your, your child's development. 
The other thing I always talk to families about, though, is if you're concerned about your student or about your child's development, please trust, you know, your intuition. Um, you know your child best. And if you have concerns about your child's development, I think that is absolutely reason enough to start seeking out resources for your child and your family or your student and their family. So there are two ways to kind of start seeking out those resources for a preschooler. Um, some families go to their doctor and look for a medical evaluation for their child. And some families, they go to their school district and seek out a special education evaluation. And um, since I work for Oakland, and that's what I do, that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, next slide, please. All right, so if you live in Oakland or your student lives in Oakland, they can request a special education evaluation um, uh, at a start beginning at age three from Oakland Unified. Now, I always like to point out that if your um, student or if you live in San Leandro, you request that evaluation from San Leandro. If you live or your, if your student lives in Berkeley or um, the family that you're serving lives in Berkeley, you request that evaluation from Berkeley. So the, you request the evaluation from, um, the family requests the evaluation from the district they live in. So that's just something important to know. But if your family um, lives in Oakland, then you would come to Burbank Preschool for your assessment because that is where our diagnostic center is held. And so, um, and those, um, that assessment is provided absolutely um, free of charge. And um, if your child is found eligible for services, those services are free, absolutely free, and they're provided in our Oakland Public Schools. Um, these evaluations take up to 60 days to be completed. I think sometimes that surprises families about how long they can take. Um, and the reason why they um, take that long is because they are very, very thorough. Um, we look at all areas of need and all areas of concern for a family. Um, they require several appointments. Um, because we're trying to be incredibly thorough for that family and address all the areas of concern. Um, and at the end of all of these meetings and all of these assessments, there's actually a super long meeting at the end that takes about two hours, and that's called an IEP meeting, and we review the assessment results at the end of that meeting. So this whole long assessment process um, is all because we want to make sure that we are doing the best job that we can do for your family, but it's also because there's a lot of legal requirements um, that we have to fulfill as a part of um, our responsibilities to the children and families of Oakland. And so just know that this process is a long one and it re does require a commitment um, from the family. So um, so make sure that um, if, you, if you're ready to participate in it, make sure that, that this is a commitment that you're willing to, to uh, be ready for. Um, so now, um, since we're in the modern age, you can refer your child for an evaluation online. And I put that link um, into the slide, but I'll also put that in the chat um, for people to access. But of course, if you would like to come in person and talk to us about referring your child for a special education evaluation, that's absolutely something you can still do. On the slide, you can see our address on 64th Avenue in Oakland, and you see our phone number. We're absolutely here to help you navigate this process in any way. Uh, we also have a website that's right there at BurbankPreK.org, which has a lot of great information on it about our programs and about the assessment process um, that you can take a look at if you have more questions or things that you want to know about the process itself. 
I'm happy to answer more questions. There's probably a lot of questions. Um, and I know that there's other people that want to speak today. But please know um, we are absolutely here to answer every question that families have. So please give out our address, our phone number, because we are here to help families navigate this complicated process. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, so we will have an opportunity for a question and answer. So after our next speaker, um, you know, we'll we'll have an opportunity to ask questions. But if you do have a burning question, please feel free to put it in the chat, and Teresa will be reviewing and responding as we transition to the next speaker. Um, our next speaker is Ben Braun. Ben is the as associate uh, director at the regional center, and he will be talking about the assessment process and programs for young children. Ben? Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm very happy to be here with you this evening. Uh, my name is Ben Braun. I'm the Associate Director for Early Start and Young Children at the Regional Center of the East Bay. I'm here to talk about our Early Start program, but first just wanted to give a little bit of general information about the Regional Center system. Um, the Regional Center of the East Bay is one of 21 regional centers across the state of California. Uh, we each serve a specific geographic area. So RCEB covers both Alameda and Contra Costa counties. Uh, we do have an office in San Leandro, as well as an office in Concord. Um, it's a system of 21 private nonprofit corporations uh, with community-based board of directors. We contract with the California Department of Developmental Services, um, and we provide services to individuals of all ages uh, with developmental disabilities residing in California. Um, the regional center system uh, was developed under the Lanterman Developmental Disabilities Act. And the Early Start program, uh, which I will be discussing today, uh, is covered by Early Start Law in California. Uh, next slide, please. So um, the Early Start program is intended to provide services for children um, up to age three um, who are either showing developmental delays or are determined to be at risk for developmental delays. Um, as of January 1st of this year, um, there are three different categories of eligibility under which a child might qualify for our program. Uh, the first would be an established risk condition. So a child with a diagnosis of cerebral palsy, seizures, Down syndrome, or other genetic conditions like that. The second and most common eligibility category for early start is a developmental delay. Um, and we determine that to be a delay of at least 25% in one or more areas of development. For every child who's referred to the Early Start program, we complete a full developmental evaluation looking at communication skills, fine and gross motor skills, cognitive or problem solving skills, self help skills, and social skills. And if the result of that evaluation determines that there is a delay of at least 25% in one or more of those areas, that child would also qualify for the Early Start program. Next slide, please. And then the third category under which children qualify um, is called high risk. And there is a list of risk factors, many of them related to uh, premature birth or maybe impact to the child in utero, that if any two, of those risk factors are present um, and are diagnosed by a qualified uh, medical professional or multidisciplinary team, then that is also a child who would be eligible for our service and considered at risk for potential developmental disability. That category does also include the children of individuals who also receive regional center services and have developmental disabilities and are being raised by them. Next slide, please. 
So uh, we provide an array of developmental services in Early Start. This is not a comprehensive list. Uh, but some of the most typical services we provide are specialized instruction provided by an infant development specialist. Oh, I think um, Ben might be experiencing some internet challenges. Why don't we take a moment to maybe ask questions for Teresa, if um, just so we get Ben back online. Do folks have questions for Teresa at this time? You can put your questions in the chat. You can raise your hand using the right raise hand feature, um, or you can go off mute and ask your question live. Also, just using Ben's slide, um, the services uh, for if a child is found eligible for special education, many of these same services are available at the school district. So it's just something to, to know. <laughs> All right. I don't think um, Ben is back. Is he back? I think we lost him. He's probably just lost his connection. Um, um, I could probably, I mean, I won't do as good of a job. <laughs> I could probably fill in a little bit. Okay, great. I think um, Ben was just probably going to say that these many of these services are, are, are services that are supplied by the regional center for eligible um, families. And, um, and uh, oftentimes what families find very useful, especially our um, case management and service coordination for families, especially um, families that are are finding are just new to having um, are finding out that their child has a, a delay of some kind, they're new to figuring out medical systems and these types of things, and they often really rely on regional center case managers to help them navigate this kind of this new world of of finding out services. And so I know that many of our families really rely on the regional center. Um, to kind of help them through this world of resources um, when their children are quite young, right? And then many, and our, uh, we know um, as the school district, we rely on the regional center. They, they often, our regional center counterparts will help um, uh, families and children uh, apply to be assessed for preschool services when they become eligible at age three. And so we work hand in hand with the regional center um, in terms of uh, children receiving their preschool services. And then often children, um, when they are, after they turn three, if children have a significant disability, they can still receive services after that point in time through the regional center. And um, the regional center is, is a very special organization because it often can re, um, provide services to children um, that really have significant areas of need all the way through their lifespan. And so, um, which is an incredible service, you know, um, the school district ends their services at age 22. And, and so the regional center really supports families all the way through. And so um, I know um, many of us in the community feel very grateful for the regional center. Um, and so here you can see, uh, is Ben back? Oh, okay. No. <laughs> okay, so just checking. I, so, um, and so if you would like to refer um, a very young child to the regional center, and again, if, the, if you know a family that's over the age, you can um, refer for zero to up to age three, this, these is where you call the phone number and the fax and the email, but you can also refer families over the age of three to the regional center. And that's not here right now, but um, we can get those resources for you as well. So, um, oh, look at Paige, just put it right in the chat. <laughs> That, that, that's magical. So that is exactly, um, and so um, I know um, I know if Ben were here, I hope he'd be singing his praises of his organization, but it's really a special organization that takes care of a lot of children. And it's not something that's available in all states. Um, so California is really a special place in that way. Great, thank you so much, Teresa, for 
You're pitching in. Um, so now we're going to move on to our next speaker. Um, we are going to hear from, oh, is it time for questions? No, we're going to go, we're going to hear from um, our next speaker and it's from Help Me Grow program. We are fortunate enough tonight to have Beatrice Dominguez from First Five Alameda County and Emily Leone from the Family Resources Na Resource Navigators to provide us with some information about the Help Me Grow program and also some tips about working with families directly. Beatrice and Emily, please take it away. Hi, thank you for having us. Um, my name is Beatriz Dominguez. I'm a child development care coordinator manager over at Help Me Grow. Um, Help Me Grow is a free countywide. Oh, you can, next slide, sorry. Help Me Grow is a free countywide system. It's designed to help parents and service providers support healthy early childhood development of children birth to five. So we support um, all children in Alameda County who are under the age of five, not yet enrolled in kindergarten. So a lot of the children that you are serving through your child cares um, and child care centers, we promote the importance of early identification and connection to services because we believe that supporting our young children today, that by supporting these young children today, we can create healthier and more prosperous communities for tomorrow. Um, next slide. So some help me grow partners with families in connecting them to services, but we also want to partner with providers in giving you child development uh, resource information. Uh, we've gone virtual for some time now, so you can access a lot of our services online or through our virtual meetings. We have a listserv that goes out uh, twice a month and it provides updates on webinars and information on community resources, uh, other opportunities in the community for uh, care providers. Uh, we have a calendar of events for families who are looking for a weekend activity or just something uh, like a Halloween event. Uh, or, you know, coming up now, we have uh, on our listserv, we'll have food drives for Thanksgiving or uh, toy giveaways for, for the holidays. We have a Facebook and an Instagram page. We have lots of printed materials for providers and for families. We have uh, a connection cafe specifically for uh, providers to network. So you get to learn about other agencies in the community doing similar work or working with similar families. And those are held quarterly. We recently had our Connection Cafe on October 28th. And that was for families, um, for supporting families through speech and language development over the pandemic. So we know that a lot of families, uh, as Teresa was mentioning earlier, weren't having that connection with other families. So they didn't know, you know, is my child doing the same as other children? And so the Connection Cafe did a presentation on how to support those families who are experiencing speech and language uh, concerns throughout the pandemic, given they couldn't socialize. Um, next slide. One of the components of Help Me Grow is our developmental screening program. Our developmental screening program is, all of our services are free. Um, but this one allows families to complete a questionnaire, um, an ASQ, that uh, helps them 
kind of follow and monitor their child's development at each interval. So they're learning about the different stages of development as the ASQs progress. Families can sign up to receive this uh, questionnaire through mail or email. Um, it's available online, it's free. Um, and this particular developmental screening program is, is the only one that's probably not just targeted for Alameda County because we have had families from lots of different places um, go in and complete them. I think one of the huge benefits of this program is that if families ever indicate a concern, uh, they'll get a call from our centralized access point to kind of go over any questions or concerns that they have. Next slide. So who should you refer to help me grow? Um, again, any families with children zero to five that live in Alameda County, any families that have questions or concerns around behavior or learning, they, um, there is no question that is too big or too small. They're welcome to, you know, call and ask about potty training or timeouts or uh, any anything, um, and we're here to help. Uh, you can have families call us directly. They can um, fill out our online contact form through alamedakids.org or we have a community referral form that you all can fill out with the family or for the family and send it in, and then we can follow up with them. Next slide. Our core component of Help Me Grow is our centralized access point. Um, I think mostly everyone is familiar with it. Uh, it's pretty known as the phone line. Um, when our centralized access point gets a referral from whether it's an early care and education provider, a pediatrician, or if the families call us directly, our first labor of the call is to clarify who we are not. We are not the speech therapists. We're not the ones doing any sorts of testing or evaluations. We're, we're very much a, a middleman, a partner between providers, parents, services. Um, we're here to meet families where they're at. Some families may get referred to us and they don't have concerns. And so we want to make sure they understand, okay, um, let's just go over what's typical, what's not typical. We can provide them with activities to focus on specific areas or areas in general. We want to make sure that if they do have concerns, that we can explore all of their options with them. So if they do need a service such as the regional center or the school district, that we can support them in understanding what the referral process looks like, as well as helping them connect to that next step. Um, and we are with them throughout the whole process. So if it's, um, I, uh, I'm no longer doing this role, but back when I did, I, I, I supported families. I, I believe I had one family I supported for two years. And it was just frequent contact about uh, typical development and how to keep supporting at the different stages. Um, when we do make referrals to resources and services, we will follow up until they do get connected. Um, but I think I really want to stress with this point is that we want to partner with you. We want to partner with providers. We want to partner with families. And so if there is a, a question that you all may have about what's typical and what's not typical, we can explore that with you as well. Um, and we've gotten referrals from early care and education providers around, you know, behavior. 
I think that's one of the big things that comes up. And so we explore strategies for you as well. Um, we, the centralized access point, the phone line is able to, of the numerous calls that we get, about 85% of those are able to be referred and connected through our centralized access point. Um, we have a contract and a partnership with Family, Navi uh, family Resource Navigators for their support in, in kind of those more intense cases. So families that need a little bit more handholding. Um, maybe it's a, a referral that's a little bit more intense, or maybe the family needs more handholding than we're able to provide over the phone. And so we partner with Family Resource Navigators, and they offer our family navigation support. And again, that's about 15 to 18 percent of our families that move on to family navigators. And with that, I am happy to introduce this um, Emily Leon, who is with Family Resource Navigators. Next slide, please. Good evening, everybody. My name is Emily, as Patrice mentioned, and I am the other half, as <laughs> you could say. So I'm a family navigator with um, in partner with the Help Me Go program. Our offices are actually located, as Patrice said, at the Family Research Navigator's offices. Um, we recently moved, so we're still in San Leandro, but we do cover all Alameda County. So then with this, it gives us a little bit um, more advantage to be able to work with the whole Alameda County within Help Me Grow. So um, I'm a family navigator, but what that means is I'm a peer parent um, person. And when I get a case uh, assigned to me, what I would do is I would get it from anybody from the um, centralized calling point center. And we will go ahead and connect with the families and also do the same thing like that. Please make sure to let them know we're not social workers, we're family navigators, and then also let them know the most important thing, we're also peer parents. Um, so then all of us in the in our organization have a child who has a disability or maybe has used the services because there was any delays at one point on their development. So we come at it from a point of, um, we walked on those shoes and we continue to walk in for some of us. Um, where there are six total uh, family navigators, um, five of us are bilingual, um, English, Spanish, mom, which is a population in Oakland and they're everywhere, but mostly in Brookville area. Um, Cantonese and then English. Um, we also have the ability of having uh, access to bilingual uh, support for other languages, which is really important as we do serve all Alameda County and all uh, different backgrounds. Um, before COVID, we did a lot of home visiting um, and that was probably what made it a little bit um, more hand-holding for those families. We met them at their home, we met them at the park. So it was a lot, a lot of one-on-one um, -on -one support um, and then guiding them. Um, we attended IEP meetings. Um, I've sat in several IEP meetings with Teresa and prior from that with Christy. Um, and we know the whole um, group at uh, Burbank. Uh, we also work uh, in connection with regional center as well. So we will um, refer over to regional center. So we will do a little bit more of that connection. But overall, um, our job is to be there for the parent and um, guiding them through the navigating all these different services and connect um, accessing some of these services. And like Becky says, uh, holding them until we are for sure that they are connected. So we're a one-on-one -on -one support and more important, we're peer parent um, navigating. Uh, next slide, please. So these are some of the services that we support families in connecting to. And um, thanks, Emily, for reminding me. Um, at the centralized access point, we have four child development care coordinators. Three of them are bilingual Spanish-English. One of them is bilingual Cantonese-English. 
We also have access to a language line that allows us to support all of the other languages in our county. Um, we help in supporting families to entitlement services, which are the regional center, the school district, um, CCS as well. We help support families in connecting to mental health. Uh, to developmental screening, to community activities. We help find them dental homes. We help connect to parent education classes. We um, have access to different community resources that we can support with um, health insurance, like uh, Medi-Cal, uh, Covered California, IHSS, Private. Private. Um, we support with basic needs, uh, CalFresh, WIC, uh, the food bank, um, financial assistance, and domestic violence support. These are just some of the services that we, we help with. Um, it really, one of the roles that we take very seriously as we partner with these families is to uh, make sure that we help them also prioritize their needs, right? So a child may come in and the family has concerns about language, but they're also in a very unsafe uh, housing situation. So we want to help them kind of prioritize and access the resources that are most meaningful first. And then we continue to connect as the progression goes. And that, um, next slide. And that is uh, Help Me Grow. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, Emily and Beatrice for all that really rich information. Um, ben is back. So if uh, I'll open up the floor for those who have questions for Ben um, and just to, Welcome back, Ben. And Teresa actually did a really good job and spoke um, high praises of Regional Center, as you also heard from your other partner organization. So I want to open up the floor for folks who might have questions for Ben. He's been really great at answering questions over chat. So if you have any questions, please go off mute, raise your hand. If not, we will move on to our next guest speaker, who is Andrea. Bradford from Bananas. Um, she'll be talking to you about a program that's targeted for family childcare providers. And I'll turn it over to Andrea. Hello. I don't see any questions. Okay, thanks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Andrea Bradford, and I am the Inclusion Navigator at Bananas. So what is an Inclusion Navigator? An inclusion navigator is someone who supports child care providers create inclusivity in their child care programs. Next slide, please. How I support child care providers. I can conduct site visits with observations and reflective meetings to help the child care providers develop support plans for children. Um, I provide one-on-one -on -one coaching on inclusive practices. I also provide materials, including toys or certain adapt adaptive equipment to create an inclusive environment for all children in the program. I'm also available to provide trainings on the ASQ3 and ASQSE2. And of course, Bananas is a resource and referral agency. So we have lots of various programs where we support with aid and we have other supports within the program. And again, for my child care providers, I also have um, a wellness support. So working in a child care can be a kind of a lonely business. So when you need someone to talk to, you need help dealing and coping with stress, you can reach out and call me, contact me via phone or email, because it's so important that, you know, you take care of yourself while you're providing care for others, and I'm here to support. So, thank you again. Thank you, Andrea. So, this is a moment for us to ask any question to any of our presenters. Um, we'll take a 
couple minutes for the questions and you can again put it in chat or use the raise hand feature. Um, we'll probably take about two questions, two minutes. Let me look, I'm gonna scroll through. I might ask some of us to help if you see any hands. I don't see any hands. Someone is asking for Andrea's contact information. Ah, Andrea, would you put that in the chat? Oh, great, Paige did it. Thank you, Paige. What's the question um, in the chat about connecting parents to um, mental health um, resources? And I think Beatrice um, answered it, but maybe Beatrice, you can expand a little bit on how you not just work with the children, of course, but you work with families as a whole. Absolutely. Um... You know, it, it, if the parents are well, then the children are well, right? So if families are going through a situation where parents need uh, co-parenting classes or, or parents need access to mental health services for themselves, we can help uh, support in connecting to that. First Five has um, just recently launched a, a fatherhood um, resource directory um, specifically for, you know, fathers who want to be more involved or, or need to learn about their child's development or need access to case management services. So we definitely do support in services for the family as a whole. Oh, I think there was another question um, from Johanna about how can we get materials for inclusion? And I don't know, maybe this is a good opportunity, Susan, for you to talk a little bit about your grant. Yeah, um, absolutely. And if you are in partnership with Teresa at Oakland Unified School District, um, we have we are partnering with them to offer adaptive equipment materials and professional development and obviously directly helping with facilities. But we're also in partnership with Bananas as well. And um, Andrea is one of our inclusion navigators that we help facilitate um, in reaching out to not only family child care providers, but also getting materials directly to family child care providers. And you'll see more of that coming this spring. So Andrea and I are working closely to develop a cohort of family child care providers and developing a starter kit for families who, for providers who are interested in and currently serving children with special needs. If you do not have materials or not sure about what should be in your toolkit, um, we will be providing uh, what we call the starter kit for inclusion. I don't know if Andrea, if you want to add more to that, because I know you've also been distributing a bunch of other materials too. Yes, um, we do have some things already at Bananas. So for those child care providers who are looking for certain materials, please contact me and let me know um, your needs. And so we can uh, partner and see what we can do. All right. If there aren't any other questions, let me see. I don't see any hands raised and I don't see, Paige, do you see any additional questions in the chat? I do not see anything else in the chat. All right, great. Thank you all for the questions and for the presentations. Um, now it's our time to go into breakout rooms. You will have a facilitator in each of your breakout rooms um, who will lead you through some of the questions and we will meet back here. Um, at 7.55, and Diana, do This meeting is being recorded. Okay, I think folks are back. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. If your interpretation is turned off, remember to reselect either English, Spanish, or Chinese again. So thank you everyone for participating and uh, the energizing, energizing discussion in the small groups. We hope you can take this energy and, and round out the last few weeks before um, the break with it.
we will be sending out an email with a meeting evaluation form. Please fill it out. We really want your feedback about this in future events. This email will also include your professional development certificate for tonight and also any other resources shared by our speakers. I want to also mention that if you, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, weren't I able to- I can't hear anything. Can you hear me okay? No, I can't hear. I Am don't I hear anything. Talking yeah, loud I can, enough? I can, I, can, I, can, I, can hear you. I can hear you too. Yeah, okay. can you? yeah we can hear you. Yep, we can okay. hear you. Just make sure you select English if you cannot hear or your preferred language. So want to also mention that at, uh, if you weren't able to join us for the Saturday symposium last, um, last weekend, last Saturday, uh, and would like more information uh, about uh, how to pick up uh, the material that was presented um, last Saturday, please put your email in the chat. Okay, so if you were not able to make last Saturday's event, would like more information about um, picking up, please put your, and it was at Bananas. It was a Saturday symposium, uh, breakfast symposium at Bananas. Sorry for the shortness there. Please uh, put your email in the chat so that we can make sure um, to email, uh, email you and reach out so that you can connect and pick up. And thank you for your participation this evening. We want to uh, thank our interpreters, International Contact, Connect, uh, wonderful group, uh, our speakers, facilitators, our program staff, symposium planning team, and Tandem, and the Rain and Packer Foundations for their support. We want to say enjoy the rest of your evening.